I'll strip down this lens. This is the 50mm Zenar f2.8 lens. I've just used a friction tool to break free that conical section in the middle and that in turn holds the mount here. This is the outer. This is the piece that would hold your bayonet hood. And here we have the lens assembly itself. So the lens capsule is held in place with three screws and washers. This is quite a clean example. Um, it's not uncommon to find these lenses quite filled up with grime at that point. Let's take that lens capsule out. Here's our capsule. Here's the helical thread. That's quite uh, sticky with dried out grease. Checking the action of the diaphragm. And I'm not letting that just fly back. Uh, those blades are... There's actually 10 blades in there. Or 10, yeah, each of those blades is two sections. Now the rivets on those things are very, very fragile, the pivots, and they, they will shear off if you give them an excuse. So I do not let this thing just snap back closed. It's different when it's on the camera, of course. You've got the rest of the mechanism holding things back anyway. It can't snap back quite so quickly. So this, what have we got here? The depth of field pointers appear to be sticky. Now oh, it's not too bad now. Okay, that's a bit... Um, that's lacklustre. We'll find out what's going on. Here's our lens mount section, and this contains this little piece here. Well, this is the brass cam that couples to the rangefinder in a Retina 3S rangefinder camera. And normally these components, I lay them out in order as they come off. So that I know it helps remind me where they're going to go back in place. These lenses are usually very much the same, but over time the method of attaching these two components together changed. This is quite a common arrangement. You see there's four wedges or wedge shaped pieces there and they're green. They're covered in some plastic type low friction material. Something similar to um, PTFE or Teflon, I suppose. Some predecessor to that. Earlier cameras, you may find, I had dealt with a lens recently, it had plain brass wedges in here instead. 
and they were wider and I think each was held in with two screws. If this spring will come off the post it's a handy thing to take it off the post so that it doesn't get damaged. It's a very fine spring. It's off. It's good. Normally I leave this post in place. This is the one with the... You need a, a screwdriver that's got a slot cut into the centre of the blade in order to fit into that if you're going to remove that. Generally speaking I don't need to remove it and so I don't. So these parts now I just need to clean. And all in this groove here, that's where those wedges run. They run in that groove there. I'll clean all that out. Naphtha, a cotton bud, a wooden toothpick to allow me to get into that groove. Clean all this front face up as, as well. Make sure everything, all, all the old grease and stuff is removed. Make sure those pinion gears run smoothly, and they do. And just generally make sure that there's no dirt or contaminants there. And then reassemble it. So I won't bore you with the cleaning, you can watch me put it back together. I'll start reassembling this lens now. This is all clean, I'm just going to run a little bit of molybdenum paste around the, the groove in here that those little wedges run in. This is aluminium so it's very soft. Um, Aluminium galls easily. It means that if something rubs on it, it can pull up some of the aluminium, rub it, and actually push it into a to a lump. It will drag aluminium with it, and then you end up with a rough spot. Of course, we don't want that. Run some on that front face, and then you use very little molybdenum paste. And then I'll put it into the mount. Now I've obviously got one wedge still in place, so I've got to make sure I get that tucked in first. I'm just checking the feel of that action, make sure it's nice and smooth. That feels good. Now one of the one of these wedges in each of the positions. Oh, yeah, I can't get this one in under that uh, rail, so I'll pop that in there first. That's better. The others are easy enough. You can remove this rail instead if you wanted to, but that's not necessary. That rail's job is to separate the return springs. So I'll just get that wedge down in position, tighten the screw up, and I'm checking the action to make sure it's smooth. It's still smooth, that feels good, and I can check the action to see if it's too loose. If I've got any rattle flexing it this way, I know that the wedge needs to be pushed in further. I've got no rattle there, so that's, that's a good start position. So I can put the screw in on that wedge. I've just left that loose at the moment. And the one opposite on the other side here. I 
I'll just check those wedges are nice and square to the lens component in the middle. Snug those screws up and check to see that the action is still smooth, and it is. Again, I'll check to make sure that there's no rock or rattle in it. It doesn't appear to be, so that all appears good. So I'll snug down those three screws and check again. Now something's tightened up. I'll slacken off that last screw. Pull the lens tube across a bit. No, it didn't make much difference. Try this one. Yeah, that feels better. That's good. It's nice and smooth. It's not loose. I think that's good. And I'm going to start assembling the pointers, the depth of field pointers into place. These are all cleaned. That first one has to drop right down to the bottom of the two pinions. And I need to get the spring on the post. it can be almost as hard getting the thing back on the post as it was to remove it. That's on. This piece is a spacer that runs between the two depth of field pointers. I'm just running, rubbing a little bit of molybdenum paste on the outside surface where the spring runs over it and top and bottom surface where it runs against those depth of field pointer rings. I'm making sure I haven't got too much on there otherwise it would create drag. That seems good. Hook that spring over the tab on the depth of field pointer. Check that that moves smoothly. That's good. There's a small cam that follows this curve in here. So I just ran some molybdenum paste down that curve and dropped this into position. The other depth of field pointer goes on next. It sits over the pin on that small cam we've just dropped in and I've got to make sure that both pointers are at the ends of their travel. They both are up against the ends of their travel there. That appears correct. I've just dropped off that pinion gear. That's better. That looks correct. This piece has the return spring and the pin on it has to couple with that small cam arrangement there that drops into the hole on there. And the spring has to hook over the spring post. Checking that that moves smoothly. It does. Now it's about ready to close this up. So first I need the screws I use to hold this together. One day I will have everything ready when I start doing a video so that I can start at the beginning and keep going. 
without having to go away and find more tools. Today is not that day. So I use three of screws here. These are just screws out of my spares boxes that have had the heads ground down on them. So I can use them as a guide posts for reassembling the, all these components together. This piece goes on next. And then this piece. Now I need to prepare the lens mount part of this. And that's this piece here. That's been cleaned. As has the cam for the rangefinder on a Retina 3S camera. I'll rub a bit of molybdenum paste on that front face and I can be a bit generous with that. Just run a little bit around the inside and outside edges where this drops into the body. It doesn't need much. Um, if it's absolutely dry, sometimes it'll it'll rattle. It, it, you get a sort of a an effect like those chatter rings that kids had some decade or two ago. You get a rattling effect. And a little bit of lubricant there can stop that. You only hear it when you move the focus and it has no effect on anything else. It just gives it a disconcerting feel if the action isn't smooth. Get these little three small retainers back in place with their fixing screws. The screwdriver is a bit magnetic here at the moment. And I keep promising to do something about that, but I never do looking across the room to see if my demagnetizer was here but it's not let's check that, that moves smoothly and it does now I have to combine these two components together we've got to couple this little brass piece here with the notch on the centre of the aluminium tube here so I normally just line it up with that hole so I know roughly where it's going to be take the two halves and lower this over the top of course it's lined up with those screws that I've popped on there normally you have to flip this little lever across otherwise it just gets trapped under the edge but that's moving smoothly that appears good I'm holding that all together finger and thumb I want to make sure that the depth of field pointers meet together in the middle that they are symmetrical about the middle and they appear to be so that's good so four screws go in the back to hold this assembly together. And having only used three guide posts to hold it together while I was 
assembling it, it meant that there was one position empty and waiting for a screw anyway. Okay, so I'm just checking that that action still moves smoothly with two screws in place. That all looks good. Can remove the guide pins and fit the screws. This was a quite a clean example of it. Excuse me. Oh, that was just somebody ringing me to see if I would repair their computer. But I have just decided that I'm not taking any new customers. Um, I'm not interested in really repairing people's computers at the moment in this season of coronavirus. And I'm certainly not going to take on new customers and deal with their problems. Existing customers I might make some arrangement for. Okay, so that's our, our lens mount complete there. Focus mount, everything's ready to go. It's nice and smooth. Now the lens capsule itself. The glass looks good. Diaphragm, clean, snappy, everything good there need to put some a bit of grease for the helical on the thread here and normally you just don't need any more than a little dot in about five or six positions around the helical run that on work it backwards and forwards and that's all that's required. I'm going to take that piece off now because it makes it easier to get this lens capsule into the mount. Two parts here have to get a little touch of molybdenum paste. The tab that moves the diaphragm and the little slot here, that notch it runs on the guide post in the mount and that's all that's required and now I can assemble these parts together so I've got to get my the tab the moving tab from the lever into that little notch first No, I didn't achieve it that time. That looks like it. I'd take that lens slightly till it drops into position. No, that's that's not right. That's the aperture is obviously too large there. That's fork wasn't correctly in position. It's one of those jobs that you only need about three hands, and you can do it quite easily. This time that works nicely. Now I've got this suspended in space at the moment because if I put it down on the table, of course, it'll push the lens back out of the tube. Put the other half of the helical back in, rotate that counterclockwise to screw it into position. And 
then we have three screws and washers hold this assembly together so I just want to get these loosely in place Alright, so I'll just slip, make sure those screws are just slightly slackened off. Rotate the focus right round to the infinity position. Nip those screws up. Check that it moves through the full range of movement and that it's smooth. That's all good. And now I can test that on the camera body. And because I've already checked to make sure that the focus at the film plane and the focus on the focus screen are both at the same, working at the same point, I can now check the focus of this lens simply on the focus screen, which I'll now do. And I can tell from that that the lens doesn't focus all the way to infinity. So I'll slacken off my three screws, rotate the outer helical clockwise a bit, and check again. Now it's focusing past infinity, so I bring the focus correct the correct position for infinity slacken the three screws and without disturbing the position of the outer helical I've got to rotate my focus mount round to the infinity position there Nip the three screws up and check that that's correct. And that is, that's bang on. So I can tighten my three screws. We've got our front piece here, the piece that holds the lens hood. That's got a little post on the back of it, so it only fits in one position. The red dot's not intended to be right up at the top in the middle, by the way. It's off slightly at the between the 12 and 1 position as you look at it. Just get this conical section started on the thread, run that down, check that everything's in place and using a friction tool just tighten that up. Check that the focus action is smooth, that there's no rattle in the front of the lens. That's it. So that lens is done and that is ready to go. This lens came to me with this funny little adapter in it which is It 
it's like multiple pieces screwed together. I'm not sure what it is. It's to act like a hood, I believe. It looks like it's been glued together. There's one size here, and there's another piece screwed into it, and it looks to me like they're glued together. It would act like a hood to some extent. I'm not 100% convinced that it's a suitable hood, because it may well be... It might crack, might vignette the image. You may end up with shadows in your corners. Just looking at it, it doesn't look like it follows the angle of the cone of the ins at the inside of the lens there well. I, I suspect that that would darken the corners of your image. Certainly a weird construction. However, that's what came, came to me on there. I'll speak to the owner and say what I think is the happening and even decide what he's going to do. I would just tend to just get rid of that piece altogether. May have done it so that he could get filters that fitted. But uh, I don't think it's a good move. So this camera's done. It's one of a pair. The owner wants the best example back. The other one here was for parts and repair purposes for my own use. So I'll do both cameras and then I'll compare them, see that he gets the best of the two. And it may well be still that I end up moving parts, decorative parts like the top cover, um, from one to the other in order to get the best result.